Great. So today, um, the, the the plan for today is to cover project basics, things around uh, uh, around folder structure and how to deal with source data in data form. Um, then um, we'll talk about things to consider when writing SQLX files, like choosing the right action type, as well as using the ref function. Um, and lastly, we will start um, covering some of the best practices to scale your project, uh, covering um, features like includes, assertions, or, or documentation in data form. OK, project basics. So the first thing is uh, how to organize a data form project. Sorry, before I start. Uh, the goal for this session is to be in, oh, as useful as possible for you uh, and as interactive as possible. So if you have any question, feel free to interrupt me after a slide if you have any question. And we'll also have time at the end for, for questions. So the, one of the first things to, to think about when, when starting your data from project is how you're going to organize it. And we see typically two main ways of organizing a project uh, that you can see here. On the left, um, the a very basic uh, folder organization is to have folders by transformation type. So you would have sources where you manipulate, where you make transformation against your sources, staging for tables that are managing data in transit, and then analytics that are really going to be the tables that you, you're going to publish in your BI tools and, and, and for business users to use. So that's one simple option to start with. And typically, you will have also subfolders and the sources. So if you're using Stripe and Shopify, for example, you will have a subfolder for Stripe and a subfolder for Shopify, and so on and so forth. Um, an alternative, depending on, on how you, yeah, that, that's more uh, a preference, is to organize by entity. So if you are a, an e-commerce shop, for example, you may, have, you may have a lot of transformations and tables around your customers. Uh, same thing around orders, uh, a table around session, and marketing and so on. Um, and the, the, the main similar, the similar point between the two is that you still have this sources folder that we believe is quite important and we'll deep dive into this uh, later. Um, one, uh, most of the slides will be practical, but th this one is a bit more, uh, more abstract. But one, one thing that we, we, we find is, is a best practice is to try to move logic as upstream as possible in your dependency tree. Uh, so if, if you look at a dependency tree, you, 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 you should try to have as, many, uh, as much transformation logic as possible on the left as possible. Uh, and, this, and this is one way to, to, to make sure that you, you, you repeat code as, as few times as possible. All right, so now talking about source, source data. So one thing we, you probably all use already, uh, if not, it's, or it could be a refresher, uh, uh, is to use declarations to reference source data. So declarations in data form is a, is, is a way to refer to source data in your data warehouse. So data that is not created by data form. So data that is created by your extract and load processes, for example. And this has many advantages. So, um, so the, having those declarations help you uh, understand the edge of your dependency graph. So when you look at your dependency tree, you know exactly what uh, your analytics stack depends on. Uh, it enables you to use the ref function against declaration. And therefore, if the source data changes, you need to only change the declaration file and then uh, and, and then the rest will be, and, and then you don't need to, need to change any other table. And lastly, it enables you to add a documentation to your source tables. So uh, if you're using BigQuery, push the data back to, to BigQuery. If not, uh, you can use that, that in the catalog and you're in the process of pushing the data in other warehouses as well. There are two ways to define declarations in data form, either in SQLX files. So you create a new SQLX file with a type declaration. You specify the, the schema, the name, the database if you're using uh, uh, Snowflake or Redshift, and then you can add a description. So this is like this is good when you have uh, a source that has one table or so. If you have sources like Stripe, for example, that have many tables in your warehouse, uh, we recommend using one JavaScript file. And in there, you can define all dependencies in one file. So in this example, you have this Stripe dependencies.js. And you can see that there is this declare function called for as many tables as there are 
in the Stripe schema in your table. And you can do the same thing for all the sources that you have. Once you've written that declaration, we encourage you to define one view per source table that you query. And that, that may sound like a duplicate, but actually there's a, there's a reason for this. Um, the, typically, the, if you look at Stripe events, for example, which is a table you get from Stripe, uh, there are a few things that you may want to do before using the table in, um, in, in other transformations. You may want to actually change the, the, the name of the fields so that they are a bit more readable. Uh, you may want to do to replace nulls with empty values uh, and, that, and, and filter out things that are not payment in, a, in that example. And for all the tables, the, the transformations you may the, the pre-transformations you may want to do on the fields uh, can be actually quite uh, a bit more a bit more advanced. Like here, where you we do coalesce or, or we, we we trans we transform uh, timestamp millis into um, into dates, and that way you see. And so this will be the, the foundation of your of the rest of your transformations. You define the declaration, then per declaration you will have a view that really like pre pre transforms everything, so that you start from a clean state for the rest of uh, of your transformations. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yep. Uh, one of my my I, I was having some problems because I wanted to actually do some assertions in the declarations. Yeah. I, I think that's not possible. But is, if I write a view first, can I actually write assertions in the view you can definitely write assertions in the view and i didn't know i mean uh, louis could you comment on the assertions on the declaration yeah um I, yeah i think you're right we don't support them but actually there's really no reason why we couldn't i think that'd be an easy easy thing for us to add so if that's a if that's a use case you have for declarations but are resorting to views instead i think we can very easily add that yeah, the, the problem is I have, imagine I have like nine tables and I, those are the source tables, but actually one, one, once I start joining them, I'll just use nested fields. So it'll become harder to valid, use assertions later. So I actually need to write the assertions on the declarations or on the view, but I actually didn't know you, you had this best practices, which is cool. Yeah, so uh, I would probably, I mean, uh, for now, I would probably uh, recommend that you write assertions on the view, uh, on the view that you have on the declaration. And the reason why is um, there may be, you may be, th that way you, you, you do a double check at once. Um, the counter argument to this is if you want to ensure that the data you load in your warehouse is correct, there having uh, assertions on the declaration would be would be better. So even though on the JS I I can have like multiple declarations in a single file, I would actually have to have just write a single file for each table once I start writing the views, right? Yes. Um, you no, you can have uh, you can define multiple views in a in a JS file as well. But typically, if you look at this example, like typically the the volume of code that we start talking about is quite large, and we would recommend having a single SQLX file for that. But if you, I mean, the, the, then you, there will be you your select star from um, doing a bunch of those in a JavaScript file seems fine if you want to be able to add tests at the same time. Um, but I'll file a bug now for um, the sessions and declarations because I think that's a good use case. Okay, thanks. Can I have a quick question, just more conceptually? Uh, and this is my, my understand so why i don't necessarily understand why i would need a declaration is it more just to see the dependency graph in terms of the um, endpoint of the sources because i guess part of what i'm doing is taking a transactional database and then transforming it into dim and fact tables so i'm already going to have to do some of the transformations and simplifications in the dim and fact tables so i'm just trying to understand why the conceptually why Yep. Go through this process. Uh, so there are, there are okay. So there are, there are two main reasons. I mean, three three main reasons. The, the first one is the one that you described, which is like having a comprehensive view of your dependency tree and knowing exactly what data form does in your warehouse. Uh, the second is there may be source data that you may want to document, maybe now, maybe at some point in the future, so that analysts that are working with you uh, may understand the source data a bit better, and 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 you can document declarations. Uh, and the last bit is to, to 
basically limit, and this is something that we cover later, uh, to to really not have any uh, hard coded schema the table name in your project, uh, and that really helps with having projects that are reproducible and and and, and clean to maintain. Um, you, you can of course skip the declaration step, but we feel that there are a lot of advantages to this, and that's why we advise this as a best practice. Okay, thank you. I don't know, Louis, if you if you wanted to add anything to that. Um, yes. So th this one is a bit. Uh, this one is less in the continuity, but uh, uh, you. One of the best practices is to organize data for users using schemas. And one thing that we 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 do, for example, internally is to everything that we transform in the warehouse is in a in, is in a, a schema named data form underscore scg for staging. And and then we have a schema named analytics that is what we then use in our BI tools and for analytics. So basically, we recommend you to have uh, oh, a, a schema, a schema or a handful of schemas that are used for transformation and staging and so on and so forth. But then to really separate the schemas that you're going to publish to to the rest of your business and using BI tools. Okay. Writing SQLX files. So uh, you probably all use ref, so this is more of a refresher. But ideally, your project will contain zero hard-coded dependency. So that's one of the benefits of, of uh, declarations as well. Uh, the, the benefit of that is that you typically only need to change one file when one table name change in your warehouse. And it means that if you deleted your entire warehouse and 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 used a product like Sitch, for example, to re-extract the data. You could point your data from project at this warehouse, click a button, and everything will, will work as before. Um, so yeah, we use ref as much as you can. And and if you can, don't use any schema at a table name in your in your project. Sorry, there's there was, I'm just thinking there's probably one thing to add on the decorations, which is not released yet, but it's probably worth mentioning is we're, we're currently working on a bunch of features around run caching. Um, and this is the basic idea is we wouldn't recreate a table or a view if it, the data for it hasn't changed. Um, and actually, for, for this, we need to understand what your input data is. Um, so while the immediate benefits of declarations right now might not be all there yet, um, in the near future, Declarations will actually play a role in kind of performance and reducing the amount of work that we do in your runs. So, yeah, maybe just one thing that was, is worth mentioning. Hopefully, we'll have more details soon. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I believe I believe a few of of you are using BigQuery, and yeah, that we yeah that they could save potential costs as well. Um, so yeah. Talking about cost, uh, <laughs> uh, choosing the right action type can be quite important. So you know when when you start uh, a data from a SQLX file, you can choose table views and increments of tables. And by default, our recommendation is to go for views uh, because they're cheap and quick. But as soon as you have downstream users, and downstream users can be understood at large here, it could be other tables uh, or it could be BI tools. Uh, then tables uh, are usually the way to go for performance and, and cost-related reasons. Um, if the input of your data is very large, um, then we recommend you to use an incremental table uh, to only append new rows instead of recreating the table from scratch. Uh, obviously, that depends on the nature of your data. Uh, but if, you, if the, your data is large and you can, and you have a key on which you can uh, define an incremental rule, uh, adding incremental tables can really speed up your pipelines and save costs or processing power. All right, scaling your uh, oh, best practices to scale your project. So uh, we mentioned, uh, Thiago, you, you mentioned assertions. So as a reminder, assertions are a data quality check uh, used to ensure the data meets expectation. And they're run as part of your schedule. So after creating a table, you, you can have assertions that will run and check if that your data that you just created is correct. And 
you will be notified if it fails, uh, uh, if your notifications are configured properly. So you can see here in the, in, the, in the example, after creating customer stats, data form will run two assertions. Uh, and here it's not, it's not uh, described what it does, but it's probably checking for null values and, 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 and uniqueness and so on. Uh, so assertions typically should be added in, uh, in the config block. Uh, and there are the three types. You can add unique keys. So to, to ensure that this is to ensure that you have the correct grain in the data. So for example, if you have a user ID field that should be unique in your table, uh, this is a good way to do this. Um, then non null to ensure that the fields are not null. So for example, user ID uh, in a user table should probably never be null as well as customer ID. And this is, you just add them to, to the array here. And lastly, um, you can define arbitrary row conditions on, on fields uh, saying, for example, that ch checking for things that are, are not null or, sorry, for, for checking for things that are not being null or, or being unique. And you can have, for example, that email-like function or having sign updates more than uh, a certain date, uh, having revenue more than uh, zero, and so on and so forth. So this is the typical way of, of defining assertions. But you can also create custom assertions in, SQ, in SQL in a, a separate SQLX file. And a typical use case for this is if you, if you, if you, have, if you have tables that, that contain revenue, for example, you may want to check that total revenue in one table is the same, thing, is the same as total revenue in another table. And, and that could be a good example uh, to, uh, for, for illustrating when to use uh, an assertion in a separate SQLX file. Um, documentation. Uh, so I don't know if you, you've seen the, uh, if, you, if you use the, the data catalog in, in data form, uh, and the, it's really a way for you to, to search through, uh, through your existing tables and understand what they mean. Uh, we are going, actually going to release a new version of the catalog um, this quarter that will let you search not only for tables, but also for columns directly. Uh, so if you're looking for bounce rate, for example, uh, you, we'll show you all the tables that contain bounce rate and so on. And, and yeah, it re can really help you scale your team and scale the usage of data across your company. Um, the, the, the two main items in the documentation that you can add, and both of those are added in the, in the config block in your SQLX file or on JavaScript. Uh, and, and you have that description field and that column, uh, column field as well, where you can have a description of the, of the rows. Uh, again, if you're using BigQuery, we push that information back to BigQuery. Uh, and for other warehouses, we're in the process of working out how to, to push the data back as well. Um, includes, um, so I don't know if many of you use includes, but you can basically in that folder name includes, you can add JavaScript files where you can, uh, define constant or uh, variables, uh, macros that can be reused across your project. And that really helps you keep your code, um, uh, clean, but also limit the repetitions that you have across your project. Um, a typical example, uh, that you may have seen already uh, is is let's say you have a uh, a country or you need to, to map countries to a country group uh, or to to a region uh, uh, instead of copying and pasting the same case when statement across all your scripts you can have that function in your includes name country group that basically returns that long case when statement uh, taking country code fields as an input uh, and and assigning them to to a region. And then you can use that function in any SQLX file, which means that when you, let's say you, you want to change that or you want to add new, you, you want to remove United Kingdom from EU, uh, uh, you, you just need to remove it from here, uh, from that includes file and every single table or every single SQLX file that uses that function will be updated uh, directly. You don't need to, to search for where that logic is implemented. Uh, and lastly, so we have this type operations that let you um, write any any SQL basically, uh, and we 
we we we generally are encouraged to to limit its usage to things that you <laughs> for for things that you really need to to use operations for. So typically, creating tables, views, and incremental or inserts uh, and so on should definitely be done in views, tables, and incremental. But sometimes, like granting usage, uh, you you have to do this in in uh, uh, you. you the even doesn't have a type for this, so um, you can use operations for this. So, for example, in here, this example uses Snowflake, uh, but after creating uh, tables uh, called Stripe and Analytics, uh, you may want to grant uh, usage and select on views and select on tables to different roles in um, uh, in Snowflake. And and yeah, typically you you would add this. At the very end of your dependency tree, after your pipeline is run, you would run this script to to get to grant access to everyone. All right. Thanks. Um, so most of those best practices are now in the docs uh, at docs.dataform.co/best-practices. Um, yeah. And yeah, if you have any questions now, now is the time.